Hello and welcome to Infusion 20. My name is Matt Hennigan. I'm a trainer here at McElroy University and this is... I'm Shannon Land, a market development specialist. Awesome. So what are we looking at here today, Shannon? So Matt, what we're looking at is this is a test fixture so that we can practice doing hot taps. Mm -hmm. Now you and I put this together uh, a few days ago so that we could showcase this at Infusion. And uh, the whole reason that we did that is that we wanted to be able to fast forward through some of those heat soaks and some of that cooling time. That way we could have a video ready to go and then also give you just a little bit of an introduction as to what the hot tap tool is. So I think basically we're, we're trying to, to figure out what's the, what's the why. why. Why is this beneficial and what's it useful for, the hot tap tool that is? Uh, I think we only have 30 minutes here. No. Fair enough. So really what the hot tap tool is, is it's designed to be able to go in and add services without disruption of service. And that's a huge thing, right? Mm -hmm. So traditionally what's happened is people have installed metallic systems. And the places they're installing these metallic systems are places that house large numbers of people. So think hospitals, think casinos, think stadiums, you know, these big buildings uh, where you can put a lot of people in it. Right. And that is where polypropylene shines, right? Well, I think one thing that you mentioned is disruption of service. That's a big, big thing. I know you've got a background in plumbing. I have a background in electrical both kind of scenarios where you don't want to have a whole lot of disruption, you know, kind of messing people's life up. And, and, you know, you don't, whether it's water or it's electricity, if you don't have water or electricity, somebody's going to be getting a little bit irritated right. at that point. So being able to do this without disrupting service is huge, mm -hmm. right? So uh, traditionally, as I was saying, metallic systems are the ones that are used, right? Because they could spec in that you can go back in and you can hot tap that at any point. Well, that was kind of before the McElroy hot tap tool. Mm -hmm. So now anybody that's installing those systems in those, those buildings that house massive people no longer have to put in metallic systems that you have to put in because you have to hot tap later. Right. Because mm -hmm. now there is the option of going in and hot tapping those lines with a polypropylene system. Now, we're not new to the hot tapping process. Right. I, was I mean, it's been that. 30 years. Right. So we've been in the business of doing hot tap on the HDPE side for a long time. And it's a tried and true process uh, we've just made that whole device a little smaller. Right. That's one thing that a lot of people, you know, bring up. If, if they're used to seeing a traditional hot tap tool, this is a whole lot more compact. And it is having and to get into crawl spaces or attics and you know that sort of stuff. Carrying that with you is a whole whole lot easier than. Well, your old field being in electricity and my old field being in plumbing, we mm -hmm. know a little bit about those tight spaces. Correct. Yeah. And pretty much all the tools that we have to deal with, we can get those in some tight spaces. Right. That makes all the difference. Mm -hmm. It really does. So you, you mentioned we've got some other tooling here. Uh, do you want to walk us through the, the Hornet that we've got here? I will. And this is, this is kind of where we start the whole process, right? right? So we've, we're on a pressurized line that we don't want to disrupt that service, and we want to add a service line. It's pretty easy to do. So those that are, that are not new to the polypropylene world have seen something similar to this, which was an outlet, right? So an outlet would have a pin right here, mm -hmm. and in order to put this on, you'd just drill a hole. Only if you've got pressure on the system you probably don't want to yeah, do that not a good idea no so what we have now is it's a saddle fitting right and so we're going to use the hornet in order to attach the saddle fitting to the crown of the pipe and basically what happens is we're just melting the surface area of the sure. fitting and then the surface area of that and then we're going to fuse them together just like any other fusion right and we'll go we'll go more into this in in our video uh, it's, you know, we've got the spider here we're going to use a spider to fuse our pup piece with our ball valve on it to the fitting that we put on uh, and then we'll actually go into the hot tapping process. What's a pupped piece? A pup piece is, if you can see this piece here, we've got a piece of pipe here and a piece of pipe here, and it is fused to the ball valve. We just call that a pup piece. So. Okay. So basically what we're doing is we're fusing two pieces of pipe onto that ball valve to cut down time in the field. That's it. That makes it pretty easy. Yeah, and then we're going to put our hot tap tool in there, punch our hole, and we're ready to go. Matt makes it sound very simple. And, and realistically, it is simple. If you've got just a little bit of experience in fusing uh, thermoplastic pipes, it's not a hard process. We're doing a saddle fitting, we're doing a socket fusion fitting, mm -hmm. and then we're going to hot tap it. Yeah. And then once the hot tap's complete, uh, we've got a complete new service line and we didn't have to disrupt anything. Well, and the cool thing is, is we also added in a, another place to shut this off at. So That's very true because if there was problems later on, on that, on that leg, you can just go ahead and shut that off. Mm -hmm. That makes it really handy. Yeah. So. so uh, We've got a video for everybody to watch. Yes, we do. And then after the video, we've got a question and answer session, right? Mm -hmm. 
And I think for the question and answer session, people just have to go to the bottom there, and if they'll click on that question and answer, they can join us for a live Q&A session. Right, and if they're watching it in the future, they'll still be able to go back and, and see those questions as well. That's great. So what do you say we let people watch that video now? Let's roll that footage. All right. All right, we're in the shop at the tech center. We've got our pipe set up. We've got our pipe stands. Uh, now we just need to get the Hornet set up. And first, we're going to kind of walk through some of the components of the Hornet. So we'll get it set this way so you can see what's going on here. All right, so as we look at the Hornet, what we want to do is just point out some of the features. We're just going to kind of work from top to bottom on this. Uh, starting out here, we have a three-position three carriage lock on this. And what this does is it gives us the ability to either lock it up, lock it down, or have a neutral so that we could run it freely up and down. And then we have our drive handles on the side. Right in front of us, what this does is this holds either our drill adapter or our fitting adapter. And it's got a uh, release pin in that. You can just slide your adapter in there, and it locks in place. Next, what we have is we have our uh, strap. And, of course, the strap just goes around the pipe, and we've got a ratcheting device on there which can secure it. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to get this secured onto the pipe itself. And to do that, all we're going to do is we're just going to strap it in and tighten it up. All right, so we've got our Hornet onto our pipe now. It's nice and secure. We used our bullet level on here to make sure that we've got the correct angle or we're going to add our service. And in this case, we wanted to do a 90-degree service off this. So where we're going to perform our hot tap uh, is going to be right here. We already know that. We've got everything marked out. And so the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to start going into the next steps that we have. First thing I want to point out, though, is Matt's holding. Uh, this is our fitting adapter with a load cell built into it. Because we're doing a saddle fusion, we want to make sure that we can control the pressures as to what pressure we put on the pipe or on the heater. And we can do that because of the load cell and the analog gauge that's built into this load cell. So why don't we go ahead and install that, Matt, and we can show everybody how it actually clips in on top. Sure. It only goes in one direction. Uh, you'll notice this tapered part here that matches up with this. There's a slot right there that this pin slides into, and you can hear it click into place. Very nice. So it works just like a regular fitting holder. Uh, there's a knob at the top that compresses this uh, rubber puck, and that actually uh, fits in the inside or the ID of the fitting itself and holds it into place. Very good. So we've got our Hornet installed. Uh, we've got our fitting adapter with load cell installed. We know exactly where we're going to do our saddle fusion. So next step in the process is we need to get our pipe and our fitting prepped. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to take some 50-60 grit utility cloth and we're going to clean both our pipe and our fitting and we're going to follow that up with some alcohol. Now depending on the procedures that you use it may go one way or the other. Some of the procedures that are out there uh, will call for abrasion or not abrasion. Some may call just for alcohol. But what we're going to do is we're going to start out with our abrasion on our pipe and we're going to use that 50-60 grit utility cloth and we're just going to remove that very fine layer on top. What we're trying to do is we're just going to try and remove the oxidation or possible contamination that may be on, we'll call it the film of the pipe itself. And really that's all what we're looking to do. Again, just moving, removing that top layer of pipe. Sure. So our pipe is, is cleaned now, it's abraded. We're going to move into our fitting. Matt, why don't you tell people a little bit what makes this fitting different? Sure. If you can see here, it looks just like a socket fitting, right? It's only missing one little piece and that's the... That's the pin that would traditionally, uh, we would drill a hole here, and the pin would go inside the crown of the pipe, and that's how that fusion would happen. Uh, for obvious reasons, we've got a pressurized pipe. We don't want to drill a hole no. into that, right? Or you can. I'm good, Matt. Okay. I'm, I'm good. Let's, so do it. Let's do the, the saddle so fusion <laughs> instead. So we've got, we've got our fitting here. We've got this abraded. We want to abrade this as well. Uh, same situation. Just making sure this is clean. We've got good, clean mating surfaces. And again, it's it's not a process where we have to get on there. We got to scrub the pipe. Right. We're just removing any possible contamination or oxidation that may be on there. So now that we got that clean, uh, why don't we go ahead and clean everything with alcohol? Sure. And before we do, Matt's gonna make sure that's secured, not tightened, but just kind of secured within the fitting adapter itself. What that allows us to do is use the actual Hornet itself to help us line this up. So I'm gonna let that kind of hold there. All right. And so again. The procedure that we're using, we're abrading, and then we're just cleaning off that surface with a high-grade isopropyl alcohol. And we're doing that with a lint-free clean cloth or paper towel. 
And so now we're getting our pipe nice and clean and just removing some of that debris that may have been left over from the ab ab abrasive material on the pipe. And then we'll do the same thing on the fitting itself. And you can see Matt's not using the same paper towel for each one because we want to make sure that we keep both of those surfaces from getting contaminated. And again, just repeating that same process with the fitting. All right. So now we've got everything clean, and the next thing that we want to do is we just want to make sure we get that fitting aligned properly to the crown of the pipe. So wherever we're going to do that fusion, first of all, we want to run it down and do a dry fit to make sure that we've got proper alignment. So Matt's just running that fitting down onto the pipe, and at this time, he's just applying a little bit of a pressure so that we can make sure that we get that proper alignment. He's down there eye level, making sure everything's good. Once we know we've got that proper alignment, what we're going to do at that point is just tighten up that puck. And Matt had pointed out that piece of rubber on the bottom. We call that a puck. And as he's applying pressure, it's making that puck swell and really hold on and secure that fitting. It looks like we've got everything secured and we're ready to move on to the next step, which really is where everything starts, which is we're going to apply heat at this point. But before we can apply heat, we've got to get our heater prepped. Sure. So I like to leave this down just as a note. Good point. Uh, so while we're prepping our heater, making sure the temperature is good, making sure it's clean. Uh, we're not uh, risking any contamination getting into our fusion zone uh, while we're working on that. All right, so we've got our heater prepped. When I say heater prepped, what I really mean by that is that we've cleaned it uh, both sides because it's got two different sides. We've got a pipe side and we've got a fitting side. Uh, the other thing that we've done, is we've made sure we're at the proper temperature for the procedure that we're using. The other thing that we've made sure of, now we in the initially when we're setting everything up, when we put our heater adapters onto our heaters, what we've done is we've aligned them up so that we're properly aligned for the crown of the pipe and then that crown of the fitting. And it, it one of the things that's on these that makes it really easy to do so is there's actually lines on the sides of the, the heater adapters. And if you'll line those up during the initial install, you'll have perfect alignment when it comes time to do the fusion. But one of the things we like to do is we just make it part of the process. Sure. We take our temperature, we clean it, we check our alignment on our heater adapters. Uh, it's a whole lot easier to check it now than when you get it in there. And a lot of the time, I'll actually set my heater adapters up, and while it's still cold, I'll make sure that everything lines up the way it should. That way I'm yes. not trying to adjust these while they're hot or have to wait for them to cool back And off. that's a great habit to get into. You ready to do this? Sure. All right. So we're just going to lift up the carriage and we're going to get our heater installed. Now it's important initially when you get your heater in there because you have to get that perfect alignment on the pipe and on the fitting itself. So this is, this is one of those spots where you want to take a little extra time to make sure everything's lined up properly. And as you can see, Matt's kind of at the end of the pipe looking down it. That's going to help you get that front and back positioning on the heater. Now what's happening is we're going into our initial heat soak or our initial melt. So what we're doing here is we're actually going to bring the fusion pressure or the initial melt pressure or initial fusion force up to 80 PSI, and we're going to hold that for 90 seconds. Now, so we're keeping time, of, keeping time over here so that we can make sure we hit that 90 seconds. What we're looking for right now is we're looking for that initial melt all the way around the fitting, all the way around the pipe, because this is going to set us up for when we go into our heat soak, which is going to be the next position that we need to be in. So right now, it looks like we're getting good melt all the way around. We're sitting at about 30 seconds right now. Now, you may not be able to see it where you're at, but where we're at, I'll help, help paint that word picture for you. What we're looking at is we've got melt coming off the heater, and we can see that the heater adapters themselves are grooved, both on the pipe side and on the fitting side. What that's going to do is that's going to give us a good melt pattern in a good uh, area so that when we remove our heater and we bring our pipe down on or bring our fitting down onto the pipe, we're going to have two good surfaces for those to uh, have a fusion take place on. So right now we're sitting at about 60 seconds, so we've still got a little bit of time left. Again, we, it's not something we want to rush at this point. We're still making sure that our alignment's good, still making sure that we're getting a good melt pattern around the pipe and around the fitting which as I look at it, we're getting a really good melt pattern all the way around. So at this time, what we've got to do is we've got to get ready to go into our heat soak. Right. We're going to do our heat soak at a zero pressure, and we're going to do that for 65 seconds. So as, if Matt's ready, we'll go ahead and go there. into so our heat soak. Yep, relieving pressure. Okay, 
So which another thing that you may not be able to see that we're going to show you later is on this side, we've got an analog gauge which is showing us what pressure we're at. So we were at 80 PSI for that 90 seconds. Now we've dropped down to zero PSI and gone into that heat soak, which we're doing for 65 seconds. And it's important during this step to make sure that you support the heater. You don't want this to rock back and forth and displace the, the molten material. The last thing you want to do is let go of that heater handle because what you see, we'll see it when you've got zero force on there, that heater will tend to slide front or back or side to side even. So we want to make sure we've got a really good melt pattern on this. Looks like we got about 20 seconds left. You're good at timing things. And this is, this looks like a good fusion. Again, we've got that nice melt pattern. And we're just, just about ready. Now, what's going to happen next is we're going to open up our carriage. We're going to remove the heater, and then we're going to bring our fitting down onto our pipe under that fusion pressure. So what we're looking for for this is about 40 PSI is what we're looking for. And we're going to hold it there for 10 minutes. And we're good to go. All right, so Matt's going to remove the heater. We want to make sure we don't clip the pipe or clip the heater at this point. And we're going to bring it down to that 40 PSI. And again, he's down at eye level, so he can make sure everything's going the way it's supposed to. Bring it up to 40 PSI. We're going to engage the carriage lock on there. Already done. And we're going to allow the pressure to sit there for 10, 10 minutes. minutes. All right, it looks like uh, our 10 minutes has gone by. So now we have a nice cooled saddle fusion that's done. So what we need to do next is just remove our Hornet. Sure. Uh, it's as easy as undoing a ratchet strap, really. What you want to do is make sure that you loosen this up so you're not trying to fight that because that's, that's uh, still attached to the, to the fitting there. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just loosen that up and then just raise that up out of the way. Perfect. And once we get this removed, what we can do is we can really take a good look at that saddle and make sure that everything is fused properly. All right, with the saddle removed, we can take a look at our joint and just make sure that we've got a good double bead all the way around it. And that's really what we're looking for. Make sure we have good alignment and make sure that we don't have any contamination within the joint itself. So now we've got to go from, we've put on our saddle fusion to installing our ball valve so that we can do our hot tap. Now, luckily, uh, we've got some pre-pupped ball valves. And when I say pre-pupped, what I mean by that is we've got pipe has already been socket fused on each end of the valve at a predetermined length for our hot tap. Takes out a lot of time and a lot of prep while you're on the job site. So if you can get your ball valves pre-pupped or have pipe already pre-installed at a predetermined length, you can save a lot of time when you go to do your actual install because we've got two socket fusions on here that we can do elsewhere before we get mm -hmm. to the job site, save a ton, a ton of time at that point, and just go straight into into socket fusion directly onto our uh, saddle fusion. Sure. So we're going to do this just like we would any other socket fusion. Uh, we're going to go through and we're going to make sure we've got our pipe prepped, we've got our uh, socket fusion prepped, and then we're going to go through the process. So starting out first things first, we need to get this prepped for our socket fusion. Sure. So we're going to start out and we're going to go through and we're going to clean everything. So we're going to use that same high-grade isopropyl alcohol and that uh, lint-free clean cloth or paper towel, and we're going to make sure that everything's clean. Now what we're doing on this, so the outlet side of this, what we're putting on our actual service, this is going to be a 63 millimeter or uh, two inch. So what we're going to do is we're just going to prep it just like we would do, again, any other socket fusion that we wanted to do. And at this point, we've got a couple, a few different options that we can do. So we've got tooling where we can do everything manual fusion, meaning we've got a handheld heater with heater adapters on each side, and we can do it manually, just hold our heater and insert our pipe, or we can utilize that spider like we've talked about before. Uh, either way is going to work. The spider may give you a little bit more uh, alignment, but we can also do that by hand. Sure. I think the spider is going to be beneficial, you know, as far as keeping it consistent every time. So we'll use a spider. We'll use a spider. <laughs> all right. So as you can see, there are lots happened. Uh, not only did we just get all of our pipe prepped, meaning we got everything cleaned, but we've also installed our spider. 
So the spider we've installed on the saddle fitting itself and then onto our pre-pupped ball valve on the pipe. Uh, in addition to that, what we've done is we've prepped our heater. So we've made sure that our temperature is up to the correct range, and then we've made sure that both sides, meaning both of the heater adapters, have also been cleaned. And at this point, we're ready to go into our heating process. Now we're going to do this again, just like a socket fusion that we would normally do. We're going to follow all the same procedures and standards that we normally would. So what we're going to do on this is we're going to insert our heater, and we're going to going to uh, rotate our handle on here, which is then in turn going to bring our carriage together within our spider, and then our we're going to get our uh, heat onto our pipe and our fitting at the same time. We've also gone and gone ahead and marked our depth on our pipe, so that we know exactly how far we've got to make sure that our pipe is inserted into the heater, so we get that proper melt. So Matt, I think if you're ready, we can go ahead and begin the heat process on this. Sure. And so as you can see, he's off to one side again, just making sure that he's got the proper stab on this. And now we are beginning the heat process. Now, when you go to actually apply heat to this, we're not trying to just crank down on this thing and push the pipe and the heater adapter into the saddle as fast as we can possibly do this. What we're, allowing, what we're trying to accomplish is to allow the heat to do that work. We're going at a moderate pace and allowing the heat to penetrate as we're uh, inserting the heater adapter into the fitting and also inserting the pipe into the heater adapter. And so once we're bottomed out on this, we're going to begin our time. And our time for this, that we, the procedure we're using, is going to be 24 seconds. So it looks like Matt is there right now, so we're going to begin our 24 seconds. And again, we're still looking to make sure that we've got a good even bead all the way around on the pipe itself and on the fitting. And so after 24 seconds, what's going to happen at that point is we're going to remove our heater, make sure we've got a good melt, and we're going to bring those two together to the point where both those beads are going to come in contact with each other. Looks like we're there now. So when we go to remove this, we're just going to make sure and pull it off without trying to hit the fitting or the pipe. And now we're going to bring our melted pipe down into the melted saddle itself, and we're just going to continue inserting that until our two beads come together. And so now at this point, what we're going to do is we're just going to allow that joint to cool. Once our joint has cooled, at that time, we're going to be ready to go into our hot tap. So you've watched us go through and uh, install our Hornet on here so we, we can do our saddle fusion. We've completed the saddle fusion. Then we moved on to our socket fusion. We did everything necessary in order to get everything prepped. And we used our spider to assist within that socket fusion. So once the socket fusion has cooled, at that point, we're ready to get into our hot tap. Now again, the procedure from start to finish, from installing your hot, or in excuse me, in installing your Hornet until the time your hot tap is complete, it runs about 30 minutes. Now, that's with making sure that your ball valve already has the pre-fused pipes on it. It will add additional time if you don't pre-fuse on the additional pipes, that de predetermined makeup. But right now, we're just going to continue to allow this cool, and we're going to come back and do our hot tap. All right, so as I said just a minute ago, we're ready to begin our hot tapping process. Everything else up to this point has, has gotten us ready for this. So with this hot tap tool, there is some things you need to know about it. And one of those is how this is going to actually go on to your piece of pipe. So... I don't know if you can tell or not, but this piece of pipe is cut very square, and for this one it is chamfered. We want to make sure that we've got a nice clean pipe edge so that when we actually go into the bottom of our hot tap tool, it's going to actually block up against the O-ring that's in there. Because inside here, we've got an O-ring and some locking rings that are going to help this uh, housing lock around the pipe itself. So let's go ahead and get this installed. Sure. First thing I want to make sure of is that I've got my valve open, so I'm not going to damage that ball valve inside. I want to make sure that this uh, pressure relief valve here is closed so we don't have any accidental. And you just put on your safety lanyard. Safety lanyard goes on. Now these, this, what he's pressing on here, those are the locking rings, and you've got to make sure you bring those up spring. in order to slip it over to the yeah, pipe. Yeah, spring detent. You can hear it bottom out. And now we'll just drop our cutter down. And you can feel it bottom out on the pipe. All right, and we really have two different options here, right? 
as far as cutting the pipe sure, itself? Sure, yeah. You can attach a drill uh, or use a ratchet. I'm going to use a ratchet just because it uh, gives me a little better feel. All right. So here we go. So we're cutting in a clockwise manner? Yep. All right, and so up to this point, we've spent probably we've probably spent 25 minutes doing our saddle, doing our socket fusions, allowing everything to cool. And now this process here at, in real time, you'll see it takes, you know, just a couple minutes in order to do your hot tap. And he's here in just a second. He's going to be able to feel, and I think yeah, you, you can, can just see, even see it on the camera. Right. You could see that instant release when he cut through the pipe. So now we've cut through the pipe, and we're just going to reverse our action and pull the actual hot tap cutter out. Sometimes easier said than done. Right. The more pressure you've got on the system, the easier that's going to be. Yeah, and we're using air today. We've got this pressurized with air. So whenever you're using air, we just want to use just a little bit of pressure. So we just have about 4 PSI on the system right now. And so what's happening now is that cutter is actually coming through the ball valve, and we've cleared the ball valve now. So at this time, we, we can shut the ball valve we off. We still have pressure on that side, so okay. we'll shut that off. So now we're controlling pressure between the ball valve and the pipe itself. So before we can remove the hot tap tool, we've got to do something else, right? Yep. We'll relieve the pressure that's between here and here with this uh, valve right there. So. And it was just a little tiny bit. Yep. All right, so. Now we'll just take this off. We'll lift up on this. Slide right out. Safety lanyard comes off. And you'll notice that the uh, the coupon is retained inside the cutter head. So uh, we don't have to worry about anything going into our system. Well, and, and, and as important as that coupon is all the debris itself through that cutting process was retained in right. the head. So now we've got a nice clean hole for our service here so that we're not reducing any volume to be coming through the service line. So our hot tap now is completely ready to add the service line uh, so you can get your socket outlet fitting fuse on your socket fitting and then run your service line and that is the completed hot tap tool fusion so again starting with a hornet we came in and we went through the complete process for doing a saddle fusion so we put our saddle on here once our saddle fitting had cooled at that point where we can go in and we can install uh, our pupped ball valve and when I again when I mean pupped it means we've pre-fused on uh, our desired length of pipe on each side what that really is going to do it's going to cut down on our install time because we can we can fabricate this way before we ever go right. into the field to do our hot tap so once we have our pipe socket fused into our saddle with our ball valve then it's just a matter of installing the hot tap tool making the cut making sure we relieve the pressure as we pull the hot tap tool off and we've got a service line ready to go and most importantly we've never disrupted service right we've never had to shut that line down to add this line and i think that wraps us up that wraps us up thanks for joining us uh, for the uh polypropylene hot tap uh question and answer session uh Shannon, how you doing? I'm doing all right, man. I'm, uh, you know, I feel a whole lot better that we just knocked Great. that out. And I felt a good a time. Little, I felt a little bit there for like Night of the Roxbury. That's right. That's right. Just a little bit. It was good. <laughs> so, yeah, thanks again, guys, for joining us. Uh, you know, before we get started, obviously, thanks. Uh, but I wanted to bring up, we've got a lot of sponsors and they have uh, virtual booths. Uh, we'd encourage you to attend those. There should be a link above... Uh, the video where you can click on those and uh, check out the different virtual booths for our sponsors. Also, uh, McElroy has a, a virtual booth as well. So if you got any other questions that you want answered, um, you, you may even be able to uh, speak to someone like Shannon. You were in a virtual booth just, just earlier, right, Shannon? I was. I was just in a virtual booth and uh, just like our sponsors are. And uh, I've got that page brought up right now that you can see, hopefully. Thanks for, thanks for sharing that, actually. You're welcome. So this is on our main page. And if you'll just go into sponsors up at the top, uh, you can go in here and you can click on each one of the sponsors. And once you click on that, it's going to give you a schedule of when you can talk to somebody live. And I think most of them uh, between one and two o'clock until the rest of the day are going to be available.
So speaking of live, uh, so if if someone chose to to attend uh, one of these meetings but had to had to skip one that they really wanted, to see, they're going to be able to go back and watch those at a later date, right? They can, yeah. If so, anybody that's registered uh, for this event can go back and they'll be able to go back through and rewatch so, these. Any, so any they've questions? All been recorded. You, right, right. So once again, any questions that you've got, whether they're they're live, real time, or in the future and, and of course you always reach out to us uh, there's someone here we're just a phone call or an email away so uh, so yeah speaking of questions do we we got any questions rolling in uh, i know the the hot tap process is, is pretty simple so i mean hopefully we, I know we explained it. i know we explained it super thoroughly so well, that's all right so what we'll do is uh, i've got some questions that are coming in now okay uh, that i can go ahead and put up on the screen there sure Sure, and as you may have noticed, Shannon and I, uh, we, we like to have conversations about these things instead of just having the back and forth, one-sided thing. I think we're both That's right. So. <laughs> so one of the things that, uh, the first question we've got, Matt, is what is the pressure range that you can operate in when you're doing so, hot tap? Right, so uh, it's up to 165 PSI. I mean, that's, I, it should vary though. Make sure that you check with uh, the recommendations of the fitting manufacturer that, that you're using, but uh, up to 165 PSI. I don't know what that is in bar. So if I don't, sorry, I should have done it. <laughs> it's okay. That is perfectly okay. So I know that when you and I went through the process of actually doing the hot tab, when you got up there and you were actually doing the cutting, uh, you were using a ratchet. So you were standing up there using a ratchet. Uh, a little easier for you to do versus me because you've got about three feet on me. Uh, <laughs> so you were able to get the leverage that's needed. Uh, but for us smaller guys, is can we use a drill? And if we can, uh, is there any kind of drill we have to use? Uh, no no particular drill. And yeah, absolutely, you can use a drill. So we had talked about, you know, coming from our background, we have background I have an electrical background. A lot of times when we're making these repairs or you know adding these things, it's not always in the easiest. You'll be up on a scissor lift, you'll be in an attic, you'll be under a house or, or wherever the case may be. It's kind of tight confines. So I chose the ratchet because you know it's it's just easy, it's compact, and you can you can throw it in a backpack if you needed to crawl in somewhere and uh, and do the work there. So, and also for me, because luck of the Irish over here. Uh, I like to make sure that I don't tear stuff up, which I will. So if you get something I can tear up, I, I assure you I will tear it up. So. I understand completely. I'm surprised I'm in the same boat. The ratchet. I'm in the same boat. Uh, so we only we only fused uh, one size on and did one size cut, but there are multiple sizes available, correct? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, so 32 to 63 millimeter, uh, that I did convert. It's one to two inches. Uh, so... And that's on on mains forty millimeter and up. And up. Yeah. So if we wanted if we wanted to do a, a saddle fusion and then a hot tap on a six thirty millimeter, we could do that. Yep. Up up to six thirty millimeter. Look at you just adding that in there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So our next one uh, again, going back to you know working in those tight confines and trying to get stuff under a house or in an attic or wherever you may be. Uh, we had said many, many times, oh, this stuff is so lightweight. But what we did not say is, what does it actually weigh? So it's going to vary, but it doesn't vary much. Okay. So okay. the hot tap tool ranges from four to five pounds. And, and when I say it varies, it's because of the size of the, the cutter. So, of course, uh -huh. the cutter, the more it's going to weigh, right? And so uh, it doesn't weigh much. So once again, like I said, you could throw that into a backpack with the ratchet and crawl into wherever you need to go and, and make that repair. With that being said, you're gonna need the Hornet, right? So, and we talked about that being lightweight. It doesn't weigh that much either. So it's, it's, it's 14, 14, 15 pounds. So 20 pounds of stuff on your back. I know you've done way more than that, Shannon. Uh, having a military background, uh, easy enough to throw all that into a backpack and, and get into a tight space where you need to make that repair. Perfect, perfect. Now I know we, we've got some more questions coming in, but I just wanna throw out there for everybody that's watching us, uh, right there on your screen, you've got a little button you can push, uh, ask a question. So feel free, go ahead and click on the button, go ahead and type in your questions and what'll happen is it'll pop up on there and then I'll see it on my screen. 
and then we can go through it. But please don't hesitate to ask any questions. Right, and also Shannon, isn't there a button? If, if someone's already asked a question uh, that you also had, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't ask that question. Push that little upvote button and it kind of brings it to the top of the list. So we, we, we know correct. questions are, are being asked more. So. That is absolutely correct, man. All right, so uh, one of the big things that uh, we like to talk about on any of our machines is maintenance. So as far as maintenance goes on the hot tap tool, on the Hornet, any tools that are gonna be utilized during this process, can you walk us through maybe maybe some pre-checks or some maintenance that might be needed with these tools? Absolutely, so you know, a, a couple of things. Uh, you wanna make sure you keep it clean. Uh, if you're drilling, if you're, you know, and I want to address this a little later, I think. Uh, if you're drilling into pipe, it's, it's plastic pipe. You want to make sure that you're taking care of the cutter. Um, you'd be surprised, but this stuff oftentimes gets thrown around in the back of trucks and that sort of thing. You want to make sure we're not bending the drive shaft. Uh, obviously, we want to make sure the safety lanyard's good and it's connected uh, for, for obvious reasons. Um, also, that little bleeder valve, you want to make sure that that's in good working order. Uh, outside of cleaning it and making sure it's, you know, it's well taken care of, uh, you know, if you take care of your tools, they're going to take care of you, right? Uh, one I suggest is inside of the cap, there's an actual, there's an O-ring in there. And you want to make sure that that obviously hasn't deteriorated. There's no contamination in there. Uh, and just keep it clean and lubricated. And you can do that. They make, uh, I think it's like six bucks on Amazon. It's called Super Lube. And it's specifically designed, it's a, uh, it's specifically designed for O-rings. So, and I figured it's like a silicone lubricant, it, you know, it's pretty commonly used. So, it, yeah. So it doesn't sound like it's too hard to maintain this thing. No, no, I mean, if you look at it, there's not a whole lot of parts and pieces to the thing. So, like I said, just keep it clean, make sure nothing gets bent, uh, torn up, make sure that bleeder valve's working properly uh, and it should be, uh, should be good. Now, if I were to bend a shaft or tear up a cutter, is that something I can order separately? Right, and so you can work with work with whoever you order your equipment from. We can, if you if you need help getting a part number or anything like that, feel free to reach out to us. Of course, uh, coming from a training uh, technical service background, you can always jump on our website. Uh, we've got Parts Finder there. You can find all the part numbers and pieces and that sort of stuff. If you're bored and just want to look at the, you know, hot tap parts. That's right. That's right. So continuing on with parts and pieces, uh, let's say that uh, I'm a contractor. I've been using the Hornet for the last two years, and I'm really interested in getting into uh, hot tapping so that I can do saddles. Is what is the, First of all, what's the part called that I need to add to my Hornet, and can I get that separately? Right. So a lot of guys that have you know been in that industry for a while may be familiar with uh, Sidewinder, and we've got part on there called the load cell. Pretty similar situation. You saw that we used it on there uh, where you, you actually, it's got the puck where you put the fitting and it has a, a gauge on there that tells you what pressure uh, you're at. You can buy that uh, separately. And I uh, wrote the part number down before doing this so I wouldn't forget it. It's SW30901. So if you've got a Hornet and you want that load cell, uh, yeah, by all means, uh, order one up and get yourself a hot tap and All right. I'm gonna, and I'm going to ask you one more just if you would please repeat that part number one more time in case there's absolutely uh s w three zero nine zero one perfect now, so they're just going to start flying off the shelves now absolutely all right so next question uh Let's see, it says after you after you get the saddle fused and pup pipe socket fused, would it be advised to pressure test the assembly, probably through the bleeder valve or the hot tap prior to actually drilling through the wall? So right. basically the question is, should let's let's say that uh, you're pre-pupping up your ball valves. And so you've got a you know a stack of ball valves sitting there that have been pupped already. Would it be advisable to do a pressure test on those prior to? Oh, I mean, it's sure it wouldn't. I mean, it's not going to hurt anything, right? So you're just going to make sure that 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 uh, that hub piece is going to to maintain pressure. It's not going to have any leaks there. So yeah, it's 
Yeah, not an issue there. Okay, and then well, I've got a. So I, I'm talking about you know maintenance and that sort of thing. Uh, I had someone ask me a question outside of here uh, that I wanted to bring up just because I think it's important. You know, we talk about uh, longevity of these cutters, right? So what you know, like we we talk about keeping them clean, uh, making sure obviously you know you're not banging them on stuff, you know. But one of the important parts is too, of course, cleaning everything is important. But if, if you're drilling into into dirty pipe, you know the the dirt and contamination that's that's gonna that's gonna wear and you know wear and tear on those. So uh, try to make sure that you you know take care of those as well. Absolutely, absolutely. So as far as the hot tap process, Matt, I know this is this may be tough, but I want want you to remember back to the very first hot tap you did. And I know it's been a long, long time ago for you, uh, but remember back to that and, and kind of talk through the learning curve, how some things that you thought were, you know, some training things that you went through that uh, allowed you to do this. So that, and then kind of the timeline, you know, when I first started, it took me this long, but after I'd done five or 10 of these this long, if you could just talk everybody through that a little bit. Sure. So the, the timeline, you know, obviously the, the more that you practice something, the more that you do something, uh, the, the better you're going to be at it, right? Whether it's, uh, you know, riding a bike or doing a hot tap. Um, whenever the, I first got trained on how to do this, of course, I was, I was nervous. I didn't want to make any mistakes and I didn't want to look ahead. <laughs> more importantly, from, from our end, you know, we've got to, we've got to be able to go out and train other people how to do this, right? And, and, and we're the McElroy representatives. So I wanted to make real sure that what I was, you know, broadcasting out there to everyone else uh, was absolutely correct. So my, my biggest thing was, you know, first of all, I didn't want something to blow up. Uh, I didn't want to shoot the hot tap through the ceiling. That was a, you know, pressure that thing. I don't, no, like, no. Like the Irish, you know, if it can happen, it's going to happen to me. Right. Uh, so once you're proficient at it, I mean, it's, it's literally, I mean, make sure, obviously, it's a, that's another thing. Make sure you open that ball valve before you jam the thing down in there and uh, start cutting into the ball valve. That could end badly as well. Uh, so, I mean, really, the, the, the biggest hurdle is just making sure you follow a process, right? And, and if, you, if you follow that process every, the same way every time, uh, you shouldn't have any issues. So proficiency will go up as well as productivity, so, yeah. And I'm trying to remember back if we told people that that was pressurized. I don't, I don't remember if we did or not. On the, what we did? Yeah, there's, I mean, a few pounds of air on there. We didn't really pressurize it up some crazy number, so. Yeah, but I, I don't think we told the audience that we actually had pressure on there. Oh, we're getting old. We can't remember everything. I, I know. I know. So going going forward and uh, working with hot tap tools, uh, any any bit of advice you want to give to people? I th I think just that. I mean, making that, and that's the other thing that's great about not just this piece of equipment, but a lot of equipment that we make. If you follow that process, it's going to be consistent every time, and you're going to be able to you know repeat that. Uh, over and over and over and get consistent results, leak-free, non-disruption to service, you, that's going to be something that happens because you're following that process. So I would, I would say that, you know, you know uh, just make sure that you, and even if it's not the exact same thing that we did, just make sure you're consistent and you should have a, a, an absolutely consistent and uh, uh, replicable result every time. Very good. And uh, one, of, one of my final questions here is there are two different options for getting a hot tap tool, correct? If you're going to purchase them. So you, you can, uh, you can get just a hot tap tool. Um, and you could also get a productivity package, which is going to include the Hornet, the load cell, the cutters and all that stuff. So you can, you can get just a standalone hot tap tool. Of course, you can get the HDPE version too if you need that. Uh, but yeah, you can get a standalone uh, polypropylene hot tap tool, or you can get that productivity package. That way, 
you know, you've got the, you've got the whole kit. It's all inclusive. Uh, you can have it on the truck and, and you're ready to tackle, tackle anything. Perfect. Now, one of the questions I also wanted to bring up because we do get asked this quite a bit is uh, why don't I see saddle fittings on your guys's website? Because we don't make saddle fittings. <laughs> <laughs> But that, believe it or not, that's a question that we get asked quite a bit is, uh, you know, I'm looking on your website and I don't, I don't see any saddle fittings. On it. Uh, but there is a place they can go to get saddle fittings, correct? Yeah, well, and, and I think, you know, this market is starting to broaden, right? So uh, that's, that's open up. So, yeah. All right. And that, I would just go back and say, uh, as we kick this off, we talked a little bit about our sponsors. And if you want to get more information on those saddle fittings, uh, this is the resource to go, right? We've got live people on the line through our sponsor booths. If you'll reach out and, and make contact with those folks, they can definitely tell you what's going on with those saddles and how to get them. Sure. That's a that very good point. Way to, way to pull that back around to the sponsor booth. Good job. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't have any other live questions that have come through at this time, Matt. Uh, I okay. think we'll just, we'll hang out for a few minutes and see if anybody else has any questions. Um, and let's see. Sure. And I think, you know, the, this would be a good opportunity if, if there are no questions and someone wants to jump off and maybe go hang out in one of the virtual booths or, or uh, go ask questions of those guys, you know, you, you get a few minutes back and you can, of course, of course, we're still going to answer questions if you need us to. Uh, but yeah. Like I said, there should be a link up above to go and click on those. And like Shannon said, you can just go and whichever virtual booth you'd like to uh, ask questions of or, or get information from, you can just click on that. There, and, and uh, we did just have another a question. Another question come in, and so this question is: If you can't get alcohol to clean with, what should you use? So say that, uh, sorry, you kind of broke up a little. I think what you said was if you can't get alcohol, what should you use to clean it with? Correct. So typically what I've seen is just people will use obviously a clean, dried, non-synthetic uh, cloth, such as cotton, uh, to, to steal from you a paper towel, but no chickies and duckies. And, and Correct. Uh, and I, I think the question was more around, uh, depending on the procedure, a lot of procedures call out that alcohol must be used. And so, you know, what I would probably say in that instance is you're going to have to go back to your procedure, go back to whoever uh, has, has written the procedure, because generally what happens with the polypropylene hot tap tool procedures, a lot of those are coming directly from the pipe manufacturers. And so if you're in an area that doesn't allow alcohol, uh, reach back out to the manufacturers of the pipe or the fittings and ask those guys, you know, can I use acetone? Is there something different that I can use in lieu of alcohol? Uh, because we've all been on job sites where, you know, sometimes they're funky about alcohol. And so at that time, that's a great time to reach out to the pipe fitting manufacturers and ask them. Right. And that, that was again, something that I was going to, that was something I was going to bring up because, you know, different pipe manufacturers may have different specifications because they might not want you to use alcohol because it may react differently with with the pipe material or the, the surface of the material, the surface of the pipe. So um, that's just, that's just a good standard operating procedure anyway. So if you're using a, a procedure, you want to make sure that you know what that procedure calls out. So you just don't automatically assume because I was using X, Y, Z pipe and they say to use alcohol that now that I'm using ABC pipe, I can use alcohol on that as well. So good points. Right. Yep. Always, always go back to your process and, you know, in this case, go back to the manufacturer and find out what the procedure is going to be. Absolutely. Anything sure. else you want to throw out there, Matt? We've got just a couple minutes left. Sure. I, you know, just really want to say thanks for everyone that shows up um, and helps make this happen. Uh, attending is, is, is great. Uh, we've had a, a really good turnout this year. Uh, even though we can't all be together and this is kind of an awkward Zoom virtual world, I think this has still been a great platform and we've got to, you know, any, any communication and contact that we get to have with our, you know, our partners and is, is good. So uh, just thanks a lot for taking time out and doing this. I know it's the world's a little crazy right now. So uh, just really appreciate uh, all the support. All right.
again, we'll give it just a couple of minutes. Our session isn't closing for uh, a few minutes yet. I feel like it's a, are we getting a, a Jerry Lee Lewis telethon? We got, we got another caller. <laughs> That's that's happening on the on the Allison side. Oh, gotcha. So yeah, in in your in your line of uh, experience, you know, being out in the field and seeing these things used, I know we had we had some stuff uh, here in town that came up with a casino where they actually came through and, and used uh, something similar to this, you know, to 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 make a repair. Um, it wasn't. Exactly the same. We actually used the, the Hornet XL to uh, make a repair on a water line in the casino. And of course, shutting down the casino uh, is no no bueno when they're, you know, losing lots of money. So that's exactly right. It, at the end the of the day, Matt. The adaptability of these tools is, is pretty phenomenal when it comes to being able to to make on the fly repairs when, you know, in situations like that. And, and once again, you know, of course, having to get up into the ceiling where, you know, there's electrical and lights and, you know, all air conditioning stuff and, and all sorts of things. The, the, you know, size and flexibility of this, this piece of this particular piece of equipment, it's, it's uh, pretty remarkable in the way that it can, can get you out of a jam. So. It is. It, it realistically, it just goes back to using the right tool for the right job. Absolutely. Just like anything else. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I'd like to think that we have the right tools. Yes, we do. Yes, we do, for sure. You know, while we got a second, we can talk a little bit about, you know, not only with that hot tap tool, maintenance on that, you know, the Hornets, you know, that's a, a pretty big part of that process too, right? So uh, same thing kind of applies with making sure that, you know, the hot tap's one thing, but if you don't have, you know, a way to help you to do that, uh, can kind of put you in a bind. So once again, you want to make sure, you know, you keep that thing clean, lubricated, make sure all the parts are working. You don't want to find out in the middle of, a, of the fusion process that you've got something wrong with your machine and you're not able to, to to make that fusion happen. So uh, whether it's the drive wheel or the, the reversing mechanism that, you know, goes up and down or goes into neutral, uh, you, you want to make sure that that's all clean and in good repair. So you're, you're able to use this stuff when you need it. So uh, obviously, you know, make sure all the fasteners are tight and you don't have, it's not wiggling around. You don't, you don't want to end up with, uh, with that happening either while you're trying to make a fusion. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm just, I'm excited to, to hear about more experiences in the field of people using the hot tap tool. Right. And as time goes on, I think we're going to hear a lot more of those. Well, and I think we've got, we've got, you know, success stories of the HDPE hot tap. We've got those for years, right? So with, with the advent of this, and if anyone's seen our pressure test caps, you can see that, you know, we kind of borrowed from, from that to make the polypropylene hot tap. So uh, we're, we're gonna end up having the, the same success stories with this uh, for sure uh, in the future. You are correct, Matt. You are correct. And as of uh, just a second ago, uh, well, actually we have about five seconds left uh, for questions to continue getting asked. Uh, any any final thoughts before we get out of here? Uh, no, uh, like I said, please make sure you uh, take a minute to go check out our sponsors uh, or our vir virtual booth. Like I said, if you want to go back and watch anything that you might have missed, um, feel free to do that as well. And, and you can reach out to us in our McElroy virtual booth. And of course, reach out to us anytime, you know, via uh, phone, email, uh, bad signal, whatever it takes. Uh, That's right. Uh, but yeah, just, yeah. Thanks again for, you know, com coming to this and, and sharing your time with us. We really appreciate it. And uh, we hope you gain something out of it. So it's nice to, 
it was nice to be able to get out in the shop and, and get hands on and, and uh, you know, and now we get to talk tapping. So that's right. And I will say that uh, we do have some additional things going on within the McElroy booth. Uh, and if you have questions, additional questions that you want to ask, that's another resource that you can go for the rest of the day. And like Matt said, just reach out to us, email, phone, uh, Zoom, uh, Teams, Chime. We, we, we use them all. Twitter. <laughs> all right. Greatly appreciate everybody being with us today, and I uh, hope you enjoy the rest of Infusion. Thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you on the next one.